name is uh, Malda Kokash. I am a microbiologist by training and I have been at George Mason University. I don't know if I want to tell you the actual truth, <laughs> but about, about 23 years. Well, yes, about 23 years. I started as an adjunct professor and I was teaching two classes, but uh, after several years, I became a full time and then went up uh, the ladder to be a professor, basically at the department, and I love it. <laughs> I, so I was born in uh, Lebanon, in Beirut, and I stayed there until my undergraduate. I did my undergraduate at the American University of Beirut in biology. I got a BS in biology. And then I came to Georgetown University uh, for my PhD. And I got my PhD from Georgetown University in microbiology and immunology, but with a focus on virology. And uh, my research was on viruses, specifically the Epstein-Barr virus, EBV, oh. which is a very interesting virus because EBV causes mono in most people. Uh, and then in some places around the world, it also can induce cancer. So in some parts of Africa where the malaria belt is, it causes uh, African Burkett's lymphoma in children, which is a cancer of the lymph nodes. And in some parts of Asia, it causes nasopharyngeal carcinoma, cancer of the nasopharynx. Uh, so studying it was very intriguing because why is it non-cancerous in some people and in others it is, and then the age group of children versus nasopharyngeal carcinoma was in adults. So it was a very interesting. Yes. And that brought you to teach what you teach now at Mason, which is? Yes. So I started, uh, so I, gra I finished my PhD and I did a fellowship also at Georgetown uh, for mm -hmm. about a year. And then we moved to Miami. I got married, moved to Miami, and I got a job at the School of Podiatric Medicine at Barry University uh, to teach their microbiology and immunology courses. And then um, uh, that was for about two years when my husband finished his residency and we came back. And that's when I, uh, found something at Mason, which they were looking for a microbiologist. And it started my journey in teaching mainly the microbiology for health sciences. I actually um, really created the course. Uh, and um, then I started teaching immunology. I taught immunology lab for a few times, um, regular intro biology, but then for the past I think 14 years I've been teaching HIV AIDS, uh, which are synthesis classes, and I I love I love teaching. <laughs> I love teaching everything, but HIV AIDS I really love teaching. And you run a a, a, a special event for HIV every, every I, I do when we are face to face. Well, uh, yes. when we can see each other, uh, um, some of the special events are I I bring. Uh, we have a whole week at George Mason, uh, end of November, beginning December, which is the, an HIV AIDS awareness week uh, that we run with um, uh, student support and advocacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it coincides with December 1st, which is World AIDS Day. And um, usually I am involved with them in bringing speakers that have been infected with a virus and they share their life story with us and we open it to everybody in the university. We make it a university event, not just my course. Basically. Yeah, uh, I have received awards. I am very, very flattered and honored uh, for teaching. I uh, received the University Teaching Excellence Award a few years back and it was really one of my bucket lists and I, it was on top and I needed to get that one. <laughs> and I've been nominated several times, but uh, one year when I made it to the finalist, I couldn't, um, 
finish my portfolio, but I was very happy that I was able to do that. And after you get it once, you're not allowed to, uh, even though you get nominated, you're not allowed to go for it again. But that's one of my proudest moments and achievements. And I get a lot of um, uh, the person that um, helped you most in the university. I get a lot of notes from my students and recognition from um, the offices of undergraduate dean and teaching excellence that you were thanked from a student for affecting or changing their life at Mason. That makes a huge difference, doesn't it? It's lovely it, feedback. It does, it does. And I just received two of them uh, earlier this week, which helped a lot. <laughs> It's, it's, fun, it's, funny, uh, it's funny that you ask because from whenever I remember, uh, I'm the oldest of three children and I would always on Sundays, uh, we would wake up with my brother and sister and I would play school with them where I was always the teacher and they were the <laughs> students. <laughs> so oh, it was teaching I from the get go. Teaching was part of me. At one point I wanted to go to medical school um, but with the civil war in Lebanon, it just became too hard. And, and when I took microbiology in undergrad, my professor, I will never forget this woman. I think she had a huge, huge role in me falling in love with the topic and oh, wonderful. pursuing it. She was yeah. young and she had just graduated from the U.S. and come back, came back and energetic and the topic fascinated me. I mean, infectious diseases fascinated me. I mean, I, I, I've been telling my students, I, uh, besides the fact that we have to live through a pandemic, I'm loving it because I'm, I'm I mean, this is my, down my field, down my alley. It's like, wow, wow, wow. And you know uh, what they're talking about. It's like, uh, it's, it's like the movie Contagion. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend everybody to see it because it's exactly like yes. that. So my biggest advice is one, to make sure that you really, really love the topic. That this is what you really want to do. Because it really is a lot of work. Be taking a science degree and specifically in biology because in the biology department, we also require you to take chemistry and physics and math and a lot of things. So you have to love the sciences. Just don't do it because somebody told you to go and do yes. it. Yes. So that it really, you know, so that's my biggest, you know. As a freshman, take it easy. Don't overwhelm yourself with too many classes at the same time and get to know your professors. It is very important over the years yeah. to make yourself uh, um, you know, your face known to your professors because these yeah. classes start off as 200, 300 and then, you know, you, if you want that, um, you know, connection, then start coming to the office just to say hi, I just came by to say hi, introduce myself, you know, just wanted, you know, to know that my this name goes with this face because later on, Maybe three or four years later, you might come back and want to ask us for a letter of recommendation. And if it's just the name out of 200 people, it becomes challenging. Yeah. So plan, plan a little bit ahead of time, you know, maybe not your freshman year, but at least in your sophomore year, plan that, okay, if I'm going to do this in the future, then let me start building that connection to really, you know, help me pursue my dreams and, and 